This is a really important conversation because we know that there have been over 4,800 currencies, government-backed debt-based currencies that do not exist anymore. Across the globe, central banks are pulling their gold back home. But why? And what does it mean for you? In today's video, Lynette Zhang uncovers the reasons behind this move and how it could impact your financial future. As currencies face uncertainty, gold remains a symbol of stability. Discover how this trend might influence your wealth and what you can do to prepare. Stay tuned to find out what this global shift means for you. So we've got to talk about what's happening, especially as the whole world has become interdependent on each other. You could say incestuously intertwined. But what did we show the world, we being the U.S., through the global financial system, through SWIFT, was that if you don't do what we want, and this should be a lesson to all of us as we go into the full surveillance economy, which we have a choice about, if we come together and we say no, sound money, but um, what did we show the world? We showed the world that if you don't do what our government wants, what our central bankers want, boom, you are cut out of the system. And so there has been an additional surge in gold repatriation, meaning countries that have been holding gold in the U.S., in Great Britain, in different places around the world, other than their countries, well, they're bringing it back to their country in droves because what do they know? If you don't hold it, you don't own it. That's what we, those of us in the U.S., has shown the world. This is not the first time that this has happened, but it's definitely heating up. So you can tell that we're near the end. Countries repatriating gold in the wake of sanctions against Russia study fines. Okay, that was a year ago. I'm going to bring you up to current. London, July 10th, an increasing number of countries are repatriating gold reserves as protection against the sort of sanctions imposed by the West on Russia, according to an Invesco survey of central bank and sovereign wealth funds. That was a year ago, but this trend is growing. So let me show you that. And I love this question. Should we all think about repatriating our financial reserves? Uh, in my opinion, that is a very strong yes. Because what are your financial reserves? Are they stocks? Are they bonds? Are they... Uh, in insurance contracts? Are they mutual funds? Are they ETFs? Are they all of these intangible assets that are held inside of the ethosphere? Or are they real money? And how about converting your intangibles into real tangible assets that you hold and own outright? Because here's how it works. Countries see control and independence. When should we do the same? There is also speculation that the repatriated gold reserves could potentially serve as the backing for an alternative global reserve currency. The U.S. gained reserve currency status because at the time in the 40s with Bretton Woods, at that time, we had the highest level of gold reserves, which were a, a lot of gold from what was happening in Europe. But we had more gold than anybody else, and that's how we became the world reserve currency. But this whole thing is shifting, and so countries want their gold back so that, they, that the U.S., or wherever they're holding it, Great Britain, cannot just shut those doors and say, oh, nope, too bad, so sad, can't have it, right? We showed the world we would do that. But countries see control and independence. When should we do the same? I say now. Now, if you have not already done it, this is the time to do it. How many warnings do you think we're going to get before all of your choices are lost? But here's what's kind of scary, especially when it goes back to world reserve status, which we've been talking about with the U.S. dollar. African nations reclaim their gold. This is an absolute shift in, goal, in global financial trust. And what countries are those? 
Oh, Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, Senegal, Cameroon, Algeria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Argentina, which is not, Argentina is not an African country. But my point in here, especially with Saudi Arabia, because the U.S. maintained that status because of the agreement that we had with Saudi Arabia to force everybody in the world to buy oil and not just from them, but from that whole Middle Eastern region, which we all know is a hot bed anyway, but to buy it with US dollars. That agreement has been falling down, particularly with the Saudi Arabia joining the BRICS and now repatriating, reclaiming their offshore gold. The recent decisions by multiple countries underscore a growing trend among nations fearing geopolitical instability and financial insecurity. Can you not see how unstable we are on a global basis, both geopolitically, but also in the value of these currencies, right? We're at the end of this currency's life cycle. And the question is, is Saudi Arabia preparing for a collapse of the petrodollar and the U.S. dollar do dominance? Well, these are all the 10 Arab countries with the biggest gold reserves. And should they all be working together, could they overwhelm the, the supposed holdings that the U.S. have? And would Saudi Arabia have the influence with along with the rest of OPEC like they have? I think so. I think so. And the RBI moves a hundred tons of gold from the UK to its vaults in India. So we're not just talking about African or even Middle Eastern or South American countries. We're also talking about India, which is also part of the BRICS nations. The RBI increases their gold stockpile with fresh buys. And we know that global central banks have been buying more gold than they ever have in history. And by the way, that trend too is growing, not just in the central bank arena, but in the global individual arena as well. It gives me a lot of hope. But this is one of the biggest movements of gold undertaken by the country since 1991. India has moved 100 metric tons of its gold stored in the UK to domestic vaults in fiscal year 24, this year. This is a very big deal. But we don't hear about that that much. Just like when the markets were crashing recently and I went online, oh, you could see some of it that was unfolding on Twitter. But I had one heck of a time finding anything in mainstream TV or even Bloomberg until the next day when the US markets were also crashing. So you gotta ask, Fed chair is mum, not saying anything on foreign nations evacuation of gold from the US. This is a very big deal because it begs the question, what does the Federal Reserve know about the international gold flows that it does not want the American people to know? Because they don't want you or I to protect ourselves from their abuse. They need you. Their job is to keep you inside of the system, making your wealth transfer to the few easier to do. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. But if you do hold it, you maintain your freedom and your choices. So when we're looking at the gold holdings of central banks and the reason why they're doing that, physical gold held in foreign central banks, foreign bullion banks, and this is 2020, 2022 and 2023. And you can see that that is growing. More and more central banks are repatriating their gold so that they're held in the country, especially obvious here, physical gold held in your own country. Look at how that's jumped. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they know what you know. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Your perception means nothing in a court of law. And whoever holds it, 
frankly, owns it outright, regardless of what your perception is. So I know that it is definitely time for us to go on a global level and create that community because if there's only one of me, what difference can I make? But when we come together and we do this on a global basis and it's so simple, it's a peaceful movement. You just convert the government garbage fiat money into sound money. Thanks for watching. The global shift towards repatriating gold is more than just a trend. It's a signal of changing times. As we navigate these uncertain waters, staying informed and prepared is crucial. If you found this video valuable, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to stay updated on the latest insights. Leave a comment with your thoughts or questions. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, knowledge is power, especially in times of economic change. Stay tuned for more videos that help you protect and grow your wealth. Until next time, take care and stay informed.